Hello everybody and welcome to our Tuesday tutorial. Um, this week I am focusing on the sewing machine needle and I know that sounds really boring and it is the absolute tiniest part of your sewing machine but believe it or not this little thing can make a huge difference in your sewing. It can make all the difference sometimes if you have the wrong needle things might not even work. Um, you can also do damage to your machine if you don't have the right needle on. Um, if the needle is bent, if it is damaged, it can come down and hit the wrong thing and damage something in your bobbin casing, which you don't want. It can also damage your project that you're working on, which you don't want. So having the right needle, having a needle that um, is in good shape and works properly, is really important in your sewing. And so I want to talk a little bit first about the different types of needles, or about the needle itself, and then the different types of needles and what they're used for. And then we'll talk a little bit about the sizes of your needles and um, what kind of projects that you want those for. But first, and um, if you, Follow me on Instagram and you go to my bio. There is a link for um, called Machine Needle or Needle Guide. Um, if you're watching this right now on Facebook, I actually did a bit.ly, so it's bit.ly slash needle guide all in caps. And then you can get a PDF form of most of the information that I'm gonna cover right now. But um, if you know anything about machine needles, you know that they're thicker at the top, of course, and come down to a point at the bottom. And so um, this top part, the thicker part, is what is going to go into your machine. And I, it's hard to show on here, but when you look at it, there is a flat back and a rounded front. That flat back always goes to the back of your machine, and that's important because it won't work if it's put in backwards. Unfortunately, most machines that I've worked with, it is possible to put it in backwards. So you need to make sure um, that it is in properly. Oh, let's see, little me for your home says, or it can fly across the room. Yes, I've done that, oh dear. I have not done that one yet. I have just broken quite a few. Um, so yeah, it is important. It really makes a huge difference in your sewing. So yes, first thing you need to do is when you install that needle is to make sure that the flat part is to the back. Now, if you come down the needle, and I know it's not going to show, well, it does kind of show on here. There is a little dent. Let's see. Um, I'm doing this on both Facebook and Instagram now, so I'm trying to make sure. But down here at the very bottom on the back is a dent in your needle. And that is called the scarf, which is why I put my scarf on today. Ha ha, I know, I'm so funny. Um, anyway, the scarf is a little dent in the back of the needle. And if you, sometime when you sit down to your machine, with, without sewing, without using the foot pedal, use your hand wheel, turn that, and um, go through one complete stitch with your bobbin casing open, exposed, so that you can see how that thread hooks at the bottom. Um, and that scarf is integral in, integral in that. Because as the needle goes down into the machine, a hook comes along and hooks that thread. And the scarf makes the spot for that hook to come through, hook the thread and loop them together before the needle goes back up again. And so that part of the needle is the scarf. And then the last part that I wanted to point out to you, if you feel the front of your needle, if you can't see it, if you're old like me and you can't see anymore, there's a groove down the front of your needle. That is for the thread to lay inside of when it goes through the fabric. That way it doesn't take up as much space, as much bulk with the thread there. If that thread can lie in the needle, it's a smaller thing going through your fabric. I hope that makes sense. It was making sense in my head. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them. But um, that's what the groove in the front is for, for that thread to lay into so that everything slides through your fabric just perfectly. So that's a quick overview of a sewing machine needle. There is actually a lot of physics that goes into that tiny little part of your machine. 
Uh, so now I want to talk about a few of the different types of needle and we're going to start with the most universal one, the universal sewing needle. And that's the one that you will use for most of your sewing, for any woven fabrics basically, um, you're going to want a universal needle. And um, the universal needles come in sizes, and let's see if we can, uh, this is so hard to do with two cameras and we're backwards so that you get it the right direction. But you'll see here at the bottom we have 70 slash 10. And that's the most common size that I work with, 70 slash 10 or um, 80 slash 12, I believe it is. I don't have it right in front of me right now. Um, that's a pretty standard one for most of your normal, your quilters cotton, if you're a quilter or work a lot with quilters cotton and craft fabrics, that's gonna be your standard size that you're going to go to. Um, the sizes start as small as, I believe it is 60 slash eight for very fine fabrics, your silks, um, satins, things like that. And they go on up to, they go to 100, 110, I think even 120. 100 is about the biggest that I ever use. Um, and so those are for your thicker denims, your canvas, that type of thing. So when you're buying your needles, you need to be aware of what fabric you're using um, and what size or what thickness of needle that you need. The 70 actually refers to, this would be 0.7 millimeters. One is a European size and one is an English or American size, I believe, but all needles come with both measurements on now because most of them are sold in both the US and Europe and Canada. Um, so I, I have come to refer them as a 70 slash 10, a um, 60 slash eight or 65 slash eight, whatever it is. And so um, just take that into account when you're buying. And um, if you have a question again, um, if you go to that, to my bio or to the bit.ly slash needle guide, um, it's all written down in there and you can have that for your record. So that is kind of the overview of needle sizes. I thought it would be fun then to talk about some of the different needle types if you're doing any fancier sewing or that kind of thing. But the most important one you need to be aware of is a universal needle is not meant to be used on knits, but knit, knit fabrics, especially jersey knits, making t-shirts, and that's very common. When you are doing that, you want a special needle. And there are a couple different kinds of needles for knit fabrics. The most common, and if you're using um, a jersey, t-shirt fabric, rib knit for the neck, anything like that, you want what's called a ballpoint needle and it is a less sharp, rounded needle. When you try to use a universal needle on your knit fabrics, it will come down and it might go really well for a few stitches and then all of a sudden comes down, takes all of your fabric. I'll kind of try to show you this here. If this was your fabric and you're sewing along, all of a sudden it's just gonna push the whole thing into the hole just like that and it's gonna jam and you're gonna get frustrated and it could rip it, which in a knit is not good because then it can run. So a ballpoint needle just slides between that knit much easier and um, you're just gonna have a much better time. Now, most knits, there are some thicker knits and you might need a bigger gauge um, ballpoint needle, but for most of your jersey knits and stuff, again, your 70 or 80 in a ballpoint needle is what you'll need. I did not have any ballpoint needles on hand. I need to go get some because I have a knit project coming up. But what I did have was a stretch needle and the stretch needle is pointier. It doesn't have the ball point, but it is shaped in such a way to work on your, I guess you'd call them finer knits, like your swimsuit fabrics, lycras, um, and lingerie fabrics. A lot of people, it's really popular right now to be making your own bras and underwear. You'll want this for that type of fabric, unless you're making the underwear out of a jersey knit. But a stretch needle, ballpoint needle, um, 
One other needle, or what you'll sometimes see it called, is Microtex. And basically Microtex and Stretch are used for the same product projects, your finer, um, fancier knit fabrics. So that's your Stretch needle. Um, I have all of mine right here in this little <laughs> container. So I'm basically just going through one at a time. But the next one that we have is your leather point. And pretty obvious what your leather point is for, but the leather point needles are super sharp and super sleek so that they can get through your leather. Now, you will use different weights, and I actually do have a couple different weights here of my leather point needles because different leathers are different. Your suede's are softer, your you know, thicker leathers, like a shoe weight, not that you sew shoes on your machine, but that weight of leather, you're going to need a heavier duty needle. So you definitely cannot work on leather with a universal needle. A fun one is your metallic needle. And again, these come in the different uh, weights of needle. Um, the metallic needles are a little bit more durable and can withstand the rubbing of the metallic thread against them. Why they don't make all needles that durable, I don't understand. But <laughs> your metallic needles are a little bit more durable. Also, the eye is shaped well so that that metallic thread can slide through without shredding your metallic thread, which is another reason um, that you need a special needle for it. And we're gonna talk in just a minute about what happens when your thread shreds. So those are the basic needle types. There's also a denim needle. I'm gonna be completely honest, I have never spent the money on a denim needle because all of the denim that I've sewn on, hemming, I couldn't even tell you how many hundreds of pairs of jeans, a 100 slash, is it 16 um, needle, is that what it is? I want to get it right. I don't want to tell you the wrong one. I believe it's 100, it's the 100 needle is big enough for your denim. It is also big enough that you can use that denim or buttonhole thread and it has a big enough eye for that um, thread to go through. So a 100 needle works fine for denim. I've also made denim quilts and I've been able to use it. So a couple of fun needles that I wanted to show you. The first one is called a wing needle. Let's see if I can get that. And if you can see, the bottom of this needle looks like someone sm smashed it flat with a hammer, but that's the wing part of it. And what this does is it pokes a bigger hole in the fabric. So it probably would work on knit. I would make sure that I had an interfacing ironed to the back of the knit before I used this on it. Um, but it works really well on wovens because it pokes that bigger hole. And so I wanna show you, I just did a little demo this morning to show you and it shows up best if I can put this light behind it. And I'm gonna try to show you both. Can you see the light coming through the hole in the center? So it works really fun with these type patterns where it keeps coming back to the center and eyelet or something like that. Opens up that hole and just makes the whole stitch a little more fun. Really, you could use it on most every decorative knit uh, stitch. If you have a decorative stitch on your machine that's very thick, very compact stitches, I probably would not use it for that. But anything like that, where it comes back to one hole more than once, I think is really fun. And really, if you look closely, even these outside little points, you can see the light coming through. So that's just a fun little needle to use. I don't use it a lot. I used it a lot more on my kids' clothes when they were little because these kind of fun trims were a lot of fun 
to put on it, but around the neckline of a t-shirt or a, you know, a shell type blouse. I'm a sucker for these little details. I just love that kind of thing. And so um, just adds a little bit of texture and interest to what otherwise would be just a completely plain garment. So that's called the wing needle. The last uh, fun needle that I wanted to show you is your double needle. And this actually has a practical application as well. But this is a double needle, exactly what it's called. And you'll see that it has one shank with two needles. And this shank has a flat back, just like I talked to you about before, so it has to go in towards the back, and that way your needle will be in the right position. It's installed exactly the same way. Slide it up in there, tighten the screw. But then it comes down to two needles. So you're going to need two spools of thread. They can be identical, they could be two different colors, depending on your design. Um, most sewing machines have two spool pins on top. If you don't have two spool pins on top, um, a cone stand, let's see, I'll show you mine. Sorry about that. A cone stand is what you'll want to have and you just put the spool or the cone of thread here, take the thread up through the top and then guide it through your machine. Then your second spool would be in your machine. You thread them through um, the same path. Now, my machine was set up for a double needle. It actually has two sides to the tension. Most machines don't have that, but check and see. One sure sign would be that your needle thread guide right above your needle has two sides, one for each thread. But if it doesn't, not a problem. Just put them all through the same guides, the same tension disc, and everything and then you can't use your needle threader with this for obvious reasons so you get out your granny glasses like me and your tweezers and thread the thread through so that's fun to make perfect top stitching perfectly parallel top stitching um, but the practical application for this needle that I use a lot is to hem anything knit and so I've done a little demo for you today on a little piece. This is just a jersey knit fabric, or it's a jersey knit. It's a cotton spandex fabric. But you can see over here the hem that I made. Now, the reason this is so practical for that, besides the fact that it kind of looks like what you would see on a pair of leggings or a t-shirt sleeve, because you only have one bobbin, see how that bobbin thread has to zigzag back and forth? That allows this hem to stretch with the fabric without breaking your thread. And so that is why it is so convenient for hemming anything that's knit. Then you don't have to do a zigzag and it just looks a little more professional, which is a lot of fun. Now, I have a confession to make. I threw this together this morning and I did adjust my tension. You want your bobbin tension to be a little bit higher than your top tension. So either lower your top tension or increase your bobbin tension. That way it pulls those top stitches just barely to the back. You don't want it too close together. You want this zigzag fairly wide and flat. Um, but here's my confession, and I don't know if you can see, I'll try to do it on both cameras, that this hem is raised. Can you see that, how it bumped up? That's not how it's supposed to be. So I'm using my mistake as my example here. My bob intention was probably a little too high on this, and I could have lowered it just a little bit, but I thought that would be a good way to show you what not to do. So if I let out that bobbin tension just a little bit, um, this would lay down much flatter and much nicer. A little iron will help. This one is quite a big bump, so probably an iron wouldn't help on this. 
And so, you know, for this, I wouldn't care. But if I was sewing for someone else or for an important project, I would rip this out and do it again. Nice thing, though, with this bobbin being as loose as it is and zigzagging, it pulls right out. Boop, the top comes out really easy. So that is a double needle. Now, I even have a double wing needle, which is actually, it's a double needle with a wing needle. And if you can see here, one side is the wing needle and one side is a regular needle. Now imagine how cool that would be with two different colors of thread doing a stitch like this. You would have this and then you would have a shadow of it, an identical shadow right off to the side. It makes a really cool effect. I probably should have made a uh, sample of that for you today, but that is a double wing needle. Again, a lot of fun. I probably would not use this one to hem apparel. It's more of a decorative and fun needle. So that's the needle types that I had to show you. Again, if you um, get my hand out, there's a few others. There are self-threading needles, which have a little slit for the eye so that you can get that thread in. I have not used those. There's something in my head that that's just gonna snag on your fabric. Probably doesn't, I haven't ever used them, but it just seems to me that that might. And then of course the denim needle, I didn't have anything to show you, but again, if you use a 100 universal needle, that is perfect for the denim. The last thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to your needles, it is important to have the correct size needle for your fabric. It is also important to have the correct size needle for your thread or the correct size thread for your needle. And I wanna show you how to test that. Um, I got this threaded beforehand so you didn't have to see me in my granny glasses and put this thread through the needle of, or the eye of this needle. I have the needle up here at the top and I'm gonna let it go and I want you to see how it falls. That is what you want to happen. You want that needle to fall right down your fabric with no problems. If it stays at the top or if it just kind of starts to fall a little bit and circle with the twisting of the thread, it's probably the thread is too big for the eye of that needle and you should go up a size in needle or down a size in thread. Most thread is the same thickness and kind of universal, but like I said, if I were to use that denim thread or buttonhole twist with a, say, 70 or 80 needle, it would shred my thread because the eye is just not big enough, and as it's trying to go through there, it's just rubbing, and it would tear it off. So I hope that's a good overview of needles. Like I said, any of that information um, is in my, my handout, or I guess you call it a handout worksheet that you can get um, in my bio. But um, I hope you understand a little more about needles because they are tiny, but they are mighty. And we, oh, that was one more thing before I go. We talked about if you have a damaged or a dull needle. Let's start with dull. If your needle is dull, it's going to have a hard time going through your fabric. Your sewing machine, it, it, synchronization or timing is essential to your sewing machine. That needle has to be there so that it can be caught by the bobbin shuttle. The thread can be caught and it can go up and keep going around. If you have a dull needle and it has to work to get through the fabric, it's not gonna be there in time and that hook's going to come around and there's no thread to catch and so you skip a stitch at best. At worst it's going to come down too late and hit that shuttle and break your needle or damage your machine and we definitely don't want to damage a machine a needle's much less expensive to replace. Also if you have any nicks and scratches on that needle that can slow it from going through the fabric and if it's not there right in time for that shuttle to hook the thread, again, you're gonna skip stitches. The worst thing that you can do is to have a bent needle because if that needle is bent, when it goes down into the bobbin casing area, 
it's going to hit something it's not supposed to. And so again, you can cause damage to your machine. You can cause damage in the bobbin casing, but if a needle comes down and gets stopped suddenly, the mechanism, it's on a pole that goes up and down. If it gets stopped suddenly, but the mechanism keeps going down, now that pole is completely off sync and you're not gonna get a stitch at all. Ask me how I know these things. Yeah. Um, sewing through too thick of fabric, you know, you might have the right size needle for your fabric, but then you come to like a flat felled seam, like in your jeans, and you hit it too hard or too fast or with the wrong size needle, again, it's just gonna stop. You're either gonna break a needle or jam the mechanism that takes your needle up and down. So that's why it's important to change your needle often, to check it for any kind of, you know, burrs or scratches, and just make sure that it's going through and timing. If you're skipping stitches, tension is one culprit, but check your needle as well and try changing out your needle. So I hope that that has been informative. Um, I know it seems kind of boring to talk about needles, but there is a lot of physics involved in them. So I hope that that was helpful to you and I hope that you have a good day. Thank you everybody for joining me.